Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Exponential Wealth. I'm your host, Aaron B. Moore. Today we have a very special guest, Vikram Kalra of Benefit Consulting Group, based in Huntington Beach, California. Really excited for us to sit down and chat with Vikram today. Big value is gonna be, how are we reducing taxable income by using retirement plans? And we're gonna talk about three different areas today. Vikram, it's a pleasure having you on today. Yeah, Aaron, uh, great to be invited to this. I'm really happy to help out. Fantastic. We have three areas that we typically like to cover um, in our podcast episodes here. First big one that we wanted to talk about was reducing taxable income for, ben for business owners. And that might be true also for individual employees. A lot of folks listening to this are gonna be either working for a large tech company or working for a large tech company and having a small business on the side or looking to start their own business on the side. So I thought that's a great place for us to start. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I work in the retirement space. I set up retirement plans. You've heard of the 401k, pension plans. These retirement plans uh, are some of the best mechanisms for business owners or sole proprietors, even employees to save on taxes. Um, they do come in two broad flavors. There's defined contribution plans and defined benefit plans. Uh, I can talk first about the defined contribution plans if you like. The I think that's probably what more people are used to. Yeah. I think a, a quick uh, cursor of use defined benefit is what your grandparents had. Uh, mm -hmm. My grandfather worked for MetLife Insurance Company back in the 1920s and 30s, if you can believe it. He mm -hmm. had a pension plan. I think maybe 15% of Americans have one. So most right. of us have a defined contribution plan on the, the 401k side, right? Exactly. Yeah. 401k is the most common type of defined contribution plan. Uh, these are plans that a company will sponsor, they'll set it up, which gives the uh, employees as well as the owner of the business who is an employee an opportunity to save on taxes 401k through a payroll deferral. Uh, there's also room for employer contributions like a match. There's things like that. Um, and th there's a, a client that I have. He is a sole uh, operator, just a one guy running an S Corp. He's a real estate agent. And I set up a 401k plan for him. He uh, annually, and this is for 2022 numbers, he can contribute $20,500 to the 401k plan via a payroll deduction. He doesn't pay taxes on that $20,500 now. And the employer contribution, the money that the company can give to the employee, he's the only employee, is 25% at maximum of salary. He's paying himself $100,000. That's $20,500 deducted on the salary side. And then 25%, that's $25,000 in this case as a company contribution. So he gets the personal deduction, he gets the corporate deduction and saves roughly half of the, his $100,000 into a 401k plan here. Exactly. Now that sounds, that sounds about, if someone has the ability to save that much, that's a great way. I mean, worth mentioning, we're not tax experts. Please consult right. your CPA or, or your tax professional. So things that we talk about in the strategies we talk about, you have to speak to a professional to implement. But we're mm -hmm. talking about roughly what 45,500 bucks of his income essentially that he's using to reduce his taxable income. Yeah. Good, right? So whatever his high water mark is for taxable income that's reduced by that amount. Yeah. Um, for all everyone listening, please go into your 401ks right now and adjust how much you're contributing if you're looking to I just heard you say something really important. Last year was 19,500. This year mm -hmm. is 20,500. So you got a full thousand dollars extra that you can stash away this year. Correct. And if you are above the age of 50, you're eligible for the catch up contribution, which is an additional 6,500 on top of the 20,500. All right. So I like, yeah, 50 or better. I love how you say that. Yes. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. Okay. I'm getting, we're all getting some grays right here, right, Vic? Oh, yeah. yeah. We're all getting there. Comes nice. first of all. Um, I also wanted to touch really briefly on these uh, defined benefit plans. You mentioned that your grandfather had them and roughly 15% of uh, employees in the United States are covered by a defined benefit plan. These are your traditional pension plans. These are 
plans that a company promises you a benefit when you retire. Not as popular with the larger companies these days because quite frankly, they have become very expensive to maintain and to fund for large companies when you take into consideration their bigger financial picture. But right. the smaller business owner, the uh, let's say the doctor who has maybe a couple of employees, uh, they benefit tremendously from these uh, defined benefit plans. They're a lot more powerful in terms of the tax deductions, depending on a lot of actuarial va- uh, calculations that take into account age, salary, there's a number of IRS mortality tables to look at. And when you put all the math together, uh, we can get contribution ranges from $100,000, $100,000 deductions. It could go upwards to $500,000 in annual deductions. I have one client who I was able to get $700,000 on a defined benefit plan contribution, all of which was tax deductible. Again, there's a lot of ways to make these calculations happen, but uh, for a small business owner of you know, high earner with maybe a couple of employees, maybe no employees, defined benefit plans are some of the most powerful ways to save on taxes. Right. That's just incredible to think that you could save $700,000 pre-tax. I mean, Mm -hmm. between we're based in California here, so it's about 10% at the state level taxes, maybe a little bit less than that. But then at the federal level, you're, you're helping your clients drop from the highest level, right? I mean, 39 down to maybe 32, maybe 24 Mm -hmm. for reducing that level of income. That's really saving on taxable income in any year. Absolutely. And I mean, you can take a look at a company like a doctor's office who's got steady income or maybe a litigator, an attorney who has a windfall in court, or maybe a client I have whose customers just suddenly got generous with their money and paid off everything in November, this windfall of money. Well, we have to see how can we let the business owner keep that and for themselves rather than pay half of it in taxes. That's right. Yeah, I think it's important to point out, right, that the strategies that we have that we're talking about today are really for and geared towards the business owner. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So um, I think that as listeners are considering launching their own business or have a side business, because I know people that and we have clients that we're working with that are working for one of the major tech companies, but then do consulting, or they're working for a biotech company and they're doing consulting uh, for their medical practice on the side, Mm -hmm. and they can earn a lot of money, like you said, not consistently, but as they complete projects. And it sounds like that's an additional way that they're able to take that income, reduce that income in that year, and make sure that they've got some money later on down the road when they're looking to step away from work. Definitely. And to uh, even take that to the next level, we can customize these plans and be flexible so that we don't overshoot, don't undershoot. We can hit the sweet spot uh, with our creative uh, design uh, process. Awesome. So, Vikram, yeah. Let's transition to the next part. It's somewhat similar, but um, we were going to talk about employee benefits. And we talked about the 401k a little bit um, with your example with the, with the realtor who was able to put that 20,500 in the 401k. Mm -hmm. But let's just focus right now on folks that aren't small business owners that are participating in their employer's retirement plans. What should they be looking out for and what should be most important to them? Uh, What's their action step after today, after they're listening to us? Yeah, well, for the uh, smaller businesses or the mid-sized businesses that sponsor a 401k plan, for the benefit of the employees, Uh, It's a great way to retain employees, uh, make sure that they don't jump ship to a competitor, which has a plan when your company does not. And these employees should definitely absolutely take advantage of the tax laws. There is a savings deficit in the United States. We as uh, consumers, as the population, if you look at the numbers, we are not saving enough. So I recommend to everybody that can do it, pay yourself first. Pay yourself through the retirement plan. Save on your 401k plan, put the money away. I know it's a savings account, you can't touch the retirement, but you're saving for your future self. And I highly recommend everyone do as much as you can. When you're looking at your 401k plan through your company, 
check and see, is there a match? If there's a match, absolutely take full advantage of that. As they say, it's free money. Well, not, nothing's free, but <laughs> you're, you're allowed to take advantage of the 401k plan. If there's a match, maybe the company will have other contributions involved. Uh, pay yourself. That's what I recommend everyone do. Right. Vikram, you know, we didn't, we didn't plan this, but these are words that I could have spoke myself. So I appreciate that we're on the same page. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I know that the people that are already working with us to hear you say it, it's, that's kind of the idea is to, to, it's, you know, it's an echo chamber where the great, the great advice, it's not just me coming from me. This is something that folks should be implementing. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Speaking of, so I'm thinking of the, the match. That's an easy one. Another big piece that folks are asking us about, and again, we're not tax professionals, CPAs, but I think it's really important and people need to be aware of it. And we get asked this all the time is about the Roth provision or the after-tax provision in these plans. Mm -hmm. um, what should we know about those? How, does, how do those come into play here? Oh, that's a great question. The uh, law allows you to participate in a 401k plan where traditionally you make X and then you take Y, a small amount of that, put it in the 401k plan, you don't pay the taxes on that amount, you let it grow with investment in the market over time and compounding interest is a very powerful force. By the time you retire, hopefully you can take it out at a small amount at a time as you need and pay a lower tax rate than you would have paid now. Right. Roth is sort of the opposite, but in the same vein, you are paying the taxes now on a 401k contribution, putting that money into an investment account in the market, watch it grow over time. When you take it out, you don't have to pay any taxes on any of the 401k contribution because you've already paid it. But the benefit is also you don't pay any taxes on the earnings that was generated for that investment. So whether you want to do one or the other, it's a great question. I personally do both. I do half my 401k as traditional, half as a Roth 401k. That's what I do, not an endorsement, but uh, it's how I hedge my... Uh, thinking about the future because it's, you know, not fully predictable, but having a Roth is a great option. Having a traditional is a great option to each their own. And uh, it's, it's a great way to go. Right. To each their own. If you're looking to reducing taxable income this year, either through the defined benefit plan where you're, I, I'm just stuck on that 700,000 number. You <laughs> mentioned someone was able to, to put away 700,000 pre-tax. That's impressive. That was our favorite. That was our favorite uh, favorite uh, creative design last year. Yeah, that we were able to accomplish. The only thing I can think of off the top of head that sounds better than that was Peter Thiel, his use of a Roth IRA. Right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, speaking of which, right the the four hundred one k plan. Just to kind of close the loop on that, as folks are listening, if you make a Roth contribution in your four hundred one k. And to your point, taking your employer's free money, the match that they're going to offer you, that's always going to be pre-tax. So even if you're doing 100% Roth, you're still getting pre-tax money, right? From that's uh, correct. That from the company. So that's important. Yes. That's really good. Okay. Yeah. So I think let's transition now to the last talking point. The uh, this has been in law in California since 2020. It's commonly known as Cal Savers, but I think th our general subject is going to be regulatory issues that small business owners need and medium business, or any business owner, frankly, needs to know. Um, the law is that this June 30th, 2022, if you have five employees or more, you need a retirement plan, a simple IRA or a 401k, a defined benefit plan, something that we're talking about, that needs to be on the books or you as the employer are going to be penalized $250 if you don't get it done in the first 90 days per employee and then $500 after 90 days per employee. So that could uh, add up pretty quickly for, for small business owners. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the Cal Savers has been in effect uh, for a couple of years, and I think it started at 500 or more employees a couple of years ago in the last year, 50 or more employees. This year, June 30th, 2022, it kicks in if you have five or more employees. And 
business owners are starting to get letters. I have clients calling me saying, hey, I thought we we're in compliance. And I said, the government, the state government is sending out these uh, letters to everybody. So I got your back. Don't worry about it. But <laughs> there, I'm getting calls. In fact, I got one yesterday of a client, a potential client who has nine employees. They've been getting letters and they're now worried they're not going to be in compliance. They looked into CalSAVERS and uh, there's a whole FAQ section on the website. It tells you how to operate it. They say it's easy, but there is uh, a lot of work to do on the payroll side. You have to report your payroll every period. You have to report all new hires. It's a lot of processing, which may work for some, but in my experience, if you're gonna have to do all this work, start thinking about a 401k plan for your company. You have nine employees, look at the 401k plan. I was able to talk to this potential client and from what started out as an annoyance, a frustration of working with the state turned into a more weight. Oh, there's a lot of tax benefits to this I didn't realize before. Let's look into this further. And before you know it, uh, she is now moving in the direction of setting up a new 401k plan and taking advantage of the tax benefits for herself and the employees themselves, they now have an opportunity as well. So what started out as annoyance and frustration for my potential client is moving towards an eye-opening experience for her, which will definitely have long-term benefits. Excellent. Yeah, that, I think that's an important distinction. If you're a small business owner, California in California, CalSAVERS is the program that will be forced upon you. Yes. Where, where essentially the state will open a Roth IRA in your employees' names. Right. And the employees, again, this gets deeper into the weeds with what CalSAVERS, how it operates, but mm -hmm. employees need to be reported to the, uh, to the CalSAVERS program and they're automatically enrolled in the 401k plan unless they proactively opt out. Um, again, this can be something that where you're forced to do something. Uh, I like to have choice. And so I think uh, being more flexible on the 401k side would uh, mitigate some of those, uh, some of those issues. Vikram, if you're a small business owner listening to this about how long and you're interested in, you know, what a 401k costs, how it operates and how it would work on your location. I mean, I, I know from experience, but I'd love to hear from you. How long does it take, right? June 30th, 2022 doesn't seem like that far away, but that's going to be here in four months. It's going to be oh, soon. Yeah. It's coming quick. And How long does it take to get a 401k plan? Can you do this the day before and you're safe or, or what? No, for a company to set up a 401k plan, you need at minimum, I'm going to say 30 days minimum. Yes. Usually when everything gets set up with all the a couple of parties involved, it could be 45 days, maybe 60. Um, those conversations need to happen well before that as well. So right around now, Maybe next month, you really need to have those conversations about, let's get this at least talked about and then make a decision. Do we move towards CalSAVERS or do we actually take advantage of a 401k plan, which is much more robust as you know they'll see. Uh, get those going now because when it takes 45 days, 60 days to get set up, uh, it's, it, you'll, be behind the, you'll be behind the eight ball uh, when July comes around and you haven't have everything in place. You don't have everything in place. That's right. So I think that's our call to action. It's if you have a financial advisor, then you need to reach out to that person to start asking about what makes financial sense for you and your business. If you need a third party administrator to help set up the plan, then you need to speak to your financial advisor and the third party administrator, mm -hmm. which is what Benefit Consulting Group does, your company. And mm -hmm. that's how we're going to get this process started. Um, Vikram, what's the best way for folks to, if they have a question about um, the content from today's podcast, what's the best way to reach you? Uh, there's a couple of ways. Uh, first is to check out our website real quick. It's www.pension-experts.com. And all the uh, basic information is there about who we are and some case studies are on there as well to get more uh, education. But if someone wants to reach out to me directly, just my first name, Vikram, V-I-K-R-A-M, at pension-experts.com. Excellent. Vikram, it's been a pleasure chopping it up with you today. Absolutely, yeah. Aaron, it's great to talk to you as well. Yeah, awesome. Well, we will talk to you soon. Have a wonderful day, wonderful weekend. Yeah, let's go and help some clients too. 
Let's get it. All right. Have a wonderful day. Talk to you soon. All right. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Today's guest, Vikram Kalra of Benefit Consulting Group, are not affiliated with LPL Financial nor SGC Financial. They have been guests of our show. The strategies that we've discussed today are going to be best implemented when you are working with a financial advisor, when you hire a third party administrator, and you work with a professional that helps you determine which strategy is best for you. Thank you so much.